Hi, I'm Jessica Lahr and this is a look at your week in the Finger Lakes. With Labor Day in the rear view mirror, it's head first into September with the kids back in school and temperatures finally cooling off after the longest stretch of hot, humid weather we've seen all summer. After midweek storms usher in cooler air, we're set up for another pretty solid weather weekend. Friday will, Friday will be mostly sunny with a high near 76 and overnight lows in the upper 50s. Saturday and Sunday will see highs in the lower 70s under mostly cloudy skies with just a 30% chance of showers each day. For the complete local forecast and live radar images, visit our local weather center online or on the FingerLakes1.com Android or iPhone app. The Women's Rights Historical Park in Seneca Falls is hosting two talks from Kitty Lambert Rudd starting at 11.30 a.m. She will be discussing her marriage, which was the first same-sex marriage to occur in New York State, and her experiences that have occurred along the way. The Waterloo Rotary is pairing up with the Finger Lakes area pilots once again for their annual fly-in breakfast. The event will offer great food as well as the chance to take a helicopter or plane ride Sunday from 8 a.m. until noon and takes place at the Finger Lakes Regional Airport in Seneca Falls. King Ferry Winery is hosting their annual Trey Levin Classic Car Show Saturday from 11 to 4. Folks are invited to roll up in their hottest car, truck, or motorcycle and will be able to enjoy a great barbecue as well as other food, wines, and craft beers. Glorious Grape Day is on tap at Varick Winery in Romulus Saturday from 9.30 until 6. All are invited to celebrate the season's harvest with complimentary grape treats such as grape pie, cookies, cheesecake, and more. A six wine sample is offered for $4 and all other fare is complimentary. Hosmer Winery is joining in the harvest celebrations with their annual harvest party Saturday from 12 to 6. The event, the event includes live music by M. Elevin, local cuisine, lawn games, and of course wine being offered by the glass or by the bottle. There is no admission fee and all are welcome to bring their lawn chairs and spend the afternoon. The Montezuma Winery in Seneca Falls is hosting a harvest hoedown on Saturday and is filled with family friendly activities including a petting zoo for the kids, old fashioned country fiddling music, a chicken and pork barbecue, and a wine to sample or enjoy by the glass. The 17th annual AIDS Ride for Life cycling event for the Southern Tier AIDS program is set for Saturday. Participants are given the choice to ride 42, 85 or 100 miles around Cayuga Lake and also have the option to try the new indoor cycling program. To register go to www.aidsrideforlife.org. Finally on Sunday it's the annual Seneca Falls Rotary Music Fest. Wine, water and all that jazz at Goose Watch Winery. A fantastic afternoon of wine and music. Week two of the local high school football season gets underway on Friday night with Pell Mack taking on University Prep at Salem Stadium in Rochester. Newark travels to Penyan, ER Gananda visits Geneva, Wayne takes on Waterloo at Tom Coughlin Stadium, South Seneca is at Marcus Whitman, Victor is at Webster Thomas, Canandaigua is at Rockport, and Clyde Savannah will be in Seneca Falls to face Minders. On Saturday afternoon, it's Lions heading down to Yates County to face Dundee and Midlakes at Red Jacket. The Syracuse Orange football opens their ACC schedule at home in the Carrier Dome against Wake Forest on Saturday at 1230. The game can be seen online at ESPN3.com or on ACC Network affiliate stations. NFL Sunday football returns this weekend and along with it is our annual NFL Pick'em Contest sponsored by Chichino's Restaurant in Waterloo and Geneva and Finger Lakes Partners Insurance. Pick 10 of Sunday's games every week for a chance to win a large cheese pizza. The overall season champ will take home a brand new 32 inch Samsung flat screen television. Look for the link to join and make your picks on our homepage. The Rex Ryan era gets underway for the Buffalo Bills on Sunday with Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts coming to Ralph with Wilson Stadium for a 1 o'clock kickoff. The game can be seen locally on CBS. 
This week's Sunday night game on NBC features the Giants and the Cowboys. We'll have all the results at our sports page or on the FingerLakes1.com app. I'll be back in less than 60 seconds with our top five local photos of the week and this week's highlights from FingerLakes1.tv. So many sights to see on the internet, but for everything local, there's no place you can get it. At FingerLakes1.com, come on over to FingerLakes1.com, Mike has your home page, news, weather, sports, and fun, log on to FingerLakes1. Local news from over 40 sources, custom local weather, over 10 hours of live broadcasts and podcasts every week on your computer, tablet, television, or smartphone. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. www.fingerlakes1.com With the late summer weather heat wave, we've received some awesome local photos as local photographers braved the hot sun to capture and share some amazing images of the Finger Lakes. Here are our top five for the last week. Coming in at number five, this portly fellow was photographed by Kim Alger in Waterloo on Friday morning, most likely waiting for his breakfast. In the fourth spot, the setting sun at Sampson State Park, State Park as seen by Rachel Burkholder late last week after a warm late summer day. At three, Robert Stopper captured these boats docked in Lyons on a hot Saturday evening during Labor Day weekend. At number two, the fog was quite thick on a Friday morning as seen here in this scene captured by Shelley Lannon on the corner of Tile Yard Road and County Road 4 in Seneca Castle. And finally, check out our photo of the week by Chris Trine who was enjoying Sunday night sunset at Chimney Bluffs with his wife while skipping and tossing beach stones into the lake. I can't get enough of the photos this week before showing you a few more like this sunflower at Frederick Farms in Phelps captured by Mike Sargent. This row of sunflowers by Diane Dirsch also at Frederick's Farms and this Labor Day gathering on the western shore of Cayuga Lake photographed by Deanna Lawrence. You can check out all these photos and many more and learn how to share your own local photos with our users here at FingerLakes1.com by visiting our local photos page on our homepage or app. Looking for dinner and a movie this weekend? Here's what's playing in local theaters. No Escape starring Owen Wilson and Pierce Bronson is showing in Auburn, Canandaigua, Eastview Mall, and the Geneva Movieplex. The Transporter Refueled is also playing in Geneva, Canandaigua, and Auburn, as well as the Lake Street Plaza Theater in Penyan. Also showing locally straight out of Compton, Sinister 2, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, the Visit, A Walk in the Woods, The Perfect Guy, and War Room. For complete local show times at theaters close to you, click on Movie Times at our homepage or on the FingerLakes1.com app. If you missed it on FingerLakes1.tv this week, the Crash Course podcast was in Stoneboro, Pennsylvania for the final leg of the Reckless Warriors Demolition Derby series on Saturday night. Here's the end of the final event as Mike LaPresha takes home the title. Looks like we're just about done here. Yeah, that does not sound good. No, it does not. <laughs> Man, that definitely does not sound good. Looking good for Mike DeFrisci. You can see his fans in the background. Flags in hand. The team storming the track. 
Not like winning the final one and Man. the championship. Close that out in decisive fashion as we watch the team celebrating. A popular win for Mike DeVrisha. Kenny Haas was back with his weekly rants on Tuesday morning, and here he gives his thoughts on Syracuse's opening win over Rhode Island and discusses the Buffalo Bills opener. Last but not least, I'm going to very quickly talk about the Orange and the Bills. Heck of a win for the Orange, but it came at a price. Yeah, it was 47 to nothing was the final score, but we lost Terrell Hunt again. He had an awkward step on the Carrier Dome turf, and down he went in a heap, tearing his Achilles tendon, ending his year in just uh, the first quarter of the first game. But I do have to give kudos to Eric Dungy, the true freshman who stepped in and did a pretty decent job leading the Orange in his absence. He's got to refine some of his passes, but I think the Orange may be in good hands with Mr. Dungy. But I mean, this week is going to be a big test. Wake Forest is definitely a little better than Rhode Island. We'll see how Dungy does against Wake Forest. And also, it's time for the Bills again, with probably their best team in a long time. Although people are wondering, they cut Matt Castle. Was that the right move? They're going with Tyrod Taylor as their starter, and E.J. Manuel as their backup. No Matt Castle, who all along looked to be penciled in as the starter. But we'll see if Rex Ryan knows what he's doing. We go up against a team and we may need a little bit of luck going up against Indianapolis. Get it? And all, as I should say, the Mets and the Yankees are doing pretty good in baseball. It could be another Subway Series. But you know with the Mets, it could almost be a cliche. And of course, that's what I need. <laughs> I'm Ken Haas and that's my stuff for this week. And I ain't going to give any On Monday the night, Steve like Brown, the newly line. crowned Seneca Falls Country Club men's club champion, was in studio just hours after winning his finals match to celebrate the win on the Finger Lakes Golfer podcast. Get to it right away. Let me welcome into the studio. We have a Rhett Ticcone over there in the bottom left. We've got Doug Brown in the upper left along with the Bobcat, not in his normal place because we've got the club champ, Steve Brown, 2015 Seneca Falls Country Club Club Championship in the house tonight. And Steve, can you show him the uh, Hill High Cup? You got the trophy tonight Bam. in studio, and there it is. And, uh, yeah, you know, oddly enough, Steve and I played in the final match. And um, and he won, so he's got the the cup and big boy chair. And as usual, we have him up here, uh, just like we had Ed Boudreaux up here last night. So um, first of all, let's uh, kind of go back to the beginning of the weekend. Uh, it started out with a 36-hole stroke play qualifier, uh, and <laughs> you know, and it was hot. Probably Saturday was the least hot of the days, but it was still hot. And um, and that got cut down to eight. And then we had quarterfinal matches Sunday morning, semifinal matches on Sunday afternoon, and then finals on Monday this afternoon. And it was 90 degrees all weekend long. And um, that's why I might look a little delirious right now. I played all those rounds, and um, and yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's taking its toll. So. Um, some of the things we'll talk about tonight, Doug and I played in the uh, semifinals yesterday, and that was a great match, and I'd played Doug years ago in a match, maybe 12 or 13 years ago. Still remember all those right. shots from that day. And, um, and yeah, so we got a lot to talk about. We'll probably talk about each match. But, uh, Steve, first of all, congratulations. Um, I feel confident in saying that our club champ is – if not the best player down at the club, among the best players, elite players. So I don't think any it was something that, uh, you know, you kind of lucked your way Sneaking into. You know, yeah. I, I don't think in the it's Seneca Falls, Doug, that you can kind of that, that can ever happen in the format we play. I've always thought Steve was a good player. He's been with the club five, six years, maybe. 
It's my, my third year. Third year? I, I have a math problem. Um, <laughs> but I uh, always respected his game. I know he can play. Played a few times with him and um, hits the ball very well. It's not a big surprise, not a surprise at all. Thank to you, To see guys. you in contention and winning, so well, congratulations. It's, it's, it's a lot of holes to get through, so, you know, I hope you don't think I luck my way through it. Not at all. But, uh like, like Jimmy said, I am, I'm just exhausted. Right. I'm excited, but I'm exhausted. In any of those matches, there's always a break or two that goes one way or the other, or a good shot or a bad shot. But it's a, it's a, it's a marathon. You've know, yeah. you got to just kind of get one your One shot through doesn't it. mean anything. That's right. So, yeah, I just tried to play it hole by hole, you know, miss little, basically, right? I didn't need to hit any great shots, just not any real terrible ones. And I basically went through the whole tournament just like that. Right. Trying to miss in the right place. I agree, because I played yesterday afternoon with you, and then I watched the match today, and I don't think I saw, maybe your tee ball in 10 might have been a mistake today. <laughs> yeah, was... um, I didn't see it, but I saw the results of it. But um, I don't remember anything yesterday or today that was, oh, my God, he's going to crumble and fall apart, and it was solid all the time. So I uh, yeah. remind you. I got to give a shout out to Matt Olmstead for helping me out today. Your caddy. He, uh, he did just phenomenal, just phenomenal. Yeah. He had towels on ice and water bottles and oh, he was just messing around half the round so you know trying to keep it light just right. like a normal right. Sunday afternoon round of golf and it really paid dividends. Right. Now it was both our first finals you and I and uh, you know in the semifinals yesterday for I, I wasn't too nervous today in the semifinals I was very nervous for whatever reason maybe it's because for me just to kind of set the stage a little bit when I was a kid when I was a teenager and I would watch the club championship finals at Seneca Falls Country Club, and Brownie would be playing in some of the matches, Steve Hyde. and When you were um, a kid, Brownie was playing. <laughs> yeah, when I was a teenager. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there'd be dozens of carts full of people watching, and everybody wanted to know who was going to win. It was just such a great event. And I, and I can remember as a kid thinking, i got to get good enough so I can play in this. And uh, I got good enough where I would qualify more often than not, and I'd get in a lot, but um, had limited success. Some years I'd win a couple matches, but never I'd never been to the Final Four. So for me, in the Final Four, for, for me it was almost like I'm this close to playing in a Monday Final, um, and so I was nervous. Once I got there, it's like I've played the whole thing. With some you know, sort it's, of success. I'm not going to be sitting there tomorrow yeah. disappointed that I'm not out there playing. Absolutely. Um, so for, I guess that's why I wasn't nervous. It's not, I knew that you were going to come out and play great and I knew I had to play great. And, uh, yeah. And then the better player won. Uh, I, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of talent down there. So coming from you guys that have been, been around and, and in the club for so long, I, I'm glad you guys accepted me there and been part of the family since day one, really, since I walked in the door. So and really a proud Canal Cup member. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. that's another. Yes, that's a whole other scenario. <laughs> yeah. Two yeah. and zero. Oh. He's got yeah. the bubble going. Yeah. <laughs> Two championships in what? Three weeks. Not so bad. Good couple oh. weeks. Should also mention Sarah Ferrara beat Lynn Court. She's the uh, women's champ, women's club champ, and great congratulations to her. She's worked pretty hard and uh, been the, been close to winning that a few times, and um, so. Glad to see her win it. And then Marv Serafino won the senior division for the third straight year. And, you know, honestly, uh, nobody – it's difficult to touch them. Although I guess Lou DiLorenzo gave him a good match today. 18 holes. Away. All the way to 18 oh, holes. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, Marv wins that for a third time. Um, and the, they have a qualifier of their own, only 18 holes. And uh, what was it that he shot? That? 72. 72 yeah, in that yeah, qualifier. Yeah, 33 on the front. 33 on the front. Yeah. Wow. So – and I think Marv could probably – if it's such a long weekend and the weather was so hot and uh it would be difficult i think for him physically to play that much golf especially this particular weekend but you know if it was like let's go out and play 18 holes marv's a top 10 player down there he's a very good player you know from the blue tees still even the short game's phenomenal so it's 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 36 holes saturday to get to the final eight of stroke play in the Saturday. men's, yeah. We have 36 holes. Check Saturday. out all of this week's episodes quarters. at FingerLakes1.tv or on the FingerLakes1TV tab on our app. All of our audio programming is also streaming in rotation on FingerLakes1 Radio. Thanks for joining me for another edition of FLX Weekly. For FingerLakes1.com, I'm Jessica Lar. Have a great weekend, weekend FingerLakes.